Hello, everybody. My name is Vanessa. I am a knitter and crocheter living in Orlando, Florida. I am the owner of Necessities, which is a yo local yarn store located about one mile from the University of Central Florida. That I'd cast on my first podcast and share some of my knitting and crochet with you all. Um, some finished objects, whips, and future plans. So, without further ado, my first finished object I have is a Surrey shirt by a Kadri, Kadri Knits. It is lovely. I love it. It's a fingering weight made out of knitting for olive pure silk in deep petroleum blue. It's got a rib, a long rib at the bottom with a split hem. A very interesting construction. Uh, you start with the one shoulder, put it on hold, cast on the second shoulder, then connect the two, knit it down, two about the armholes, same thing for the back, join in the round. So it's a really interesting construction. I really enjoyed it. But I got to say, the best surprise about the sweater is the fabric that it made. And for those of us in Central, Central Florida, or in Florida in general, this Knitting for Olive Pure Silk has got to be the best yarn that we can uh, get because it has such a beautiful drape. It is such a cool fabric as far as temperature. It's something that we can wear all year round here, which is lovely. I know that around the country it's hot everywhere, so everybody can pretty much use this right now. But this really is a great yarn and fabric for anybody who's in a, in a hot climate. So again, the Surrey shirt from Kadri, C-A-I-D-R-E-E. -E. One of my favorites. I love to wear it every week. The second FO I have, I actually don't have it here. It is a, or what is, was a pair of socks for my son, who is so knit worthy because he absolutely loves hand knit socks, even here in Florida. There was a skating yarn that I had purchased from, I know, I own a yarn store. You're saying, why are you buying yarn? Because there was a local event yarn lounge that was occurred on the International Knit Public Day and there were vendors there. And of course I had to go out to the community and support. So I bought a few skeins of yarn and one of them was from Twin Mommy Creations and it was this bright highlighter yellow yarn. So bright and, and for my son, the brighter the better. So it was highlighter yellow with some beautiful speckles in it and it made a great pair of socks. And so what I'll do is Next podcast, if I remember, I'll bring those in and show that to y'all. So those are my two finished objects that I have. I have a whole lot of finished objects in my past, but you know, we're not going to go through that because we're starting a new podcast, so we'll just start fresh. I can go through my whips now. The first one I have is the Anchor Tea by Petite Knit. And again, I'm using uh, Knitting for Olive. This is something that I do carry in the store, so I like to make my store samples out of uh, things that I have in the store. But anyway, this is Knitting for Olive and it is Plum Rose is the color and I'm using the Merino. So I think everybody just about by now knows about Petite Knit and knows about the Anchor Tea. This is my second one. The first one I did out of Knitting for Olive, Cotton Merino, which is 70% cotton, 30% Merino. And then this one is 100% Merino. So it'll be really good for our Florida winter, so to speak. Somewhere around December, January, February, I'll be able to wear this a lot. So I'm having fun with that. That's my whip number one. Whip number two is another pair of socks. I always like to have a pair of socks on the needles for when I'm in the car. Little, just have five minutes downtime, but you can pull out of your purse, pull out of your bag. So here's my, this is just the start of sock number one. I like to knit my socks on nine inch circulars. And my go-to sock is about 15 rows of one by one rib. And then I do three by one rib for as many rows, depending on who I'm knitting it for. If it's for me, I usually do about 30 to 50 rows, depending if I want a short, shorter sock or longer sock. Sometimes I do shorties and just do 10, 10 or 15 rows. But anyway, so I knit a three by one rib and then the heel just depends again on who I'm knitting it for. I'm, you know, what kind of heel fits them better. So for me, I do like a heel flapping gusset. I have been using the Hermione's Everyday Heel a lot lately. I really like it. It's a, a modified eye partridge heel. And I just really like it. The directions are great. 
it's a free pattern on Ravelry. So if that's something you're interested in, check it out. It's, it's a great pattern. So I am using a self-striping yarn by Patrick Knitz. And this one is called, second, oh, Arigato. The purple is called Arigato. And then I'm also, for my accent, using Lang Jawal in color number 83.0250, which is a golden mustardy kind of yellow, which the speckles in this yarn, it's picked up in the speckles really nicely. So I think it's going to be a great pair of socks. Again, a three by one rib. It's my go-to because it doesn't stretch out like a vanilla sock. It tends to pull back in and hold on to your leg and your foot. So everybody in my family really seems to like this three by one rib. So I think I'll stick with it for now. <laughs> That's whip number two. Whip number three is another petite knit pattern. It is the puppy tee and is where I am a little bit down the body down the body I can't remember how many uh, inches I have to knit but I do have a a few this is where I last moved my stitch marker since a day or two ago and then I've got a little a little B stitch marker that I had in a received in a I believe it's a yarnables kit as well as my unicorn needle toppers just to keep the yarn from falling out now this yarn is really nice it's I love it it's so soft and super squishy the yarn is by Amano Awa is the name of the yarn sorry about that it's Awa is the name of the yarn and it is 55% baby alpaca 20 cent percent, excuse me, 26 percent merino wool and 19 percent pima cotton. Um, so it is going to be a really warm sweater because of the fact that it has the wool and baby alpaca in it. And it's, it's sport weight, but it really is a thick, thick yarn. It's super squishy and I can't wait to start wearing this sweater when it does cool down a little bit. And I use that term loosely because it doesn't get too cool here in Central Florida, but we do have our days. I know it doesn't snow, but we do have our days. It does get it does get chilly here now and again. So that's whip number three. So I have for the first time ever two sweaters on the needles, both on the body. So I'm a little bit bored with my knitting right now, but I do want to get through it because I am definitely a product knitter. I love love the products. I want to wear them. I want to give them away. I want to see them in use. So, but I will say working with that Awa yarn is really, I'm really enjoying the process because it's a beautiful yarn to work with. Very soft and squishy. In fact, I usually use metal needles on all my projects, but with this one, the yarn seemed to be so slippery, especially with the increases that I was making, that I quickly switched to uh, wooden needles and I'm really enjoying it a lot. So, highly recommend it. For future plans, I've got a couple of project ideas here that I want to cast on or start next. And the first one is the Hasta bag, which is by Sidsil Sandgild, S-A-N-G-I-L-D. It's a crochet bag made out of sport weight yarn. In this one, apparently you measure the gauge after 10 rounds using a three millimeter hook. Now, I think they recommend a cotton yard for this. However, I did see on another podcast where they had made a bag of this out of Lumi, which is a Barocco yarn, and it's got a little bit of a, a sparkle in it. It is 80% cotton, 18% polyester, and 2% other fibers, which is probably where the sparkle comes from. I have, right now I have three colors. I've got this really pretty green, and this is kind of a rose gold color, which, okay, the green is color number 8130. The rose gold color is 8105. And then I have this one, which has some blue in it. It's a medium to navy blue, and it's color 8106. So I thought about making the bag out of this green color because I just think it would be really, really fun 
for the rest of summer. And, you know, because it's so warm here in Florida all year, I don't even have to wait till spring or summer. I can pretty much use the bag all year. So I am thinking about this one because it's crochet. Crochet is so fast. Uh, I think I'd have a product to real quick. So that really, that really appeals to me. So that's my potential cast on number one. Potential cast on number two. I found this today. Jamie Hoffman and I'm trying to remember the name, the company name. Anyway, she's got some patterns right now that are 40% off. Uh, so I was looking through them and I came across this one I'd never seen before. It's called Beauty Berry. One word, Beauty Berry. And again, the uh, designer's name is Jamie Hoffman. It's a fingering weight sleeveless tank um, using a US 3 or 3.25 millimeter lace panel with some what's described as easy cables and it's knitted bottom, bottom up in one piece. And again, for Florida, I thought this would be great for our weather, but then I was couldn't figure out what kind of yarn I wanted to use. The yarn in it is, or the yarn they use had wool and silk in it, which is beautiful because like, of that beautiful sheen. So I do have some exquisite that I thought I could use. Uh, and this is from West Yorkshire Spinners. It's a four ply, 80% Falkland wool, 20% mulberry silk. So it's a similar makeup of what they use in the sweater. And I've got a few colors in store, so I just have to take a look and see which ones I think I'd like to use the, or that I would like the best. I'm trying to look for the color name on here. Oh, here we go. So this one is called Baroque, which is kind of, it's, it's a gray color. And then there is Wisteria, which is intriguing to me. I like purple. Here is a blue called Kensington. And the sheen on this yarn is just gorgeous. I love the way it feels. It's so soft. A beautiful green called Ivy. Green's not my color as far as for my coloring, but this green is so beautiful. I just love this. I think it's so pretty. Now this is probably a little towards my coloring. This one's called Bayswater. Blue's always pretty good for me. I like that one. It's kind of a teal, teal blue. And then finally, I have Dusk, which is an orangey tan, not really orangey, but a tan, not terracotta. Anyway, the color of the screen's pretty good. So you can see that. So I thought about, again, that Beauty Berry Maybe using one of these colors. I'm thinking about this one. I think that one looked good. So that's one more possible cast on. And then I've got one more that I like to talk about. I saw this one and I thought it was so cute and it would be good for our Florida, excuse me, winter, so to speak. It is a fingering weight sweater by the Petite Knitter called the spring fling it's made out of sport weight yarn top down end around using a us4 or 3.5 millimeter and i just thought it was so cute i just love the way that they the the photographs they took they were so so nice beautiful and so again i took a look around and thought what can i use that's kind of a sport weight that i might get gauge on give me one second i'll be right back okay and we're back I uh, had some lovely customers come into the store, so I went ahead and paused, took a moment, and I am back. So we were talking about Spring Fling by the Petite Knitter, and I was looking at some colors, some potential color combinations for this sweater. And one color combination I came up with is this light gray and teal color. The light gray is color 78103 and the teal is 78121. So that would be really pretty. Really you could do it either way with the flowers being in this color and the main body in this and or vice versa. Flowers in this color and main body in this. That's a pretty combination. And then keeping University of Central Florida in mind, I thought a black and gold in combination would be nice. Although not the exact gold for UCF, at least it pays homage to the University of Central Florida. The black color is color number 7845, 
and the golden color is 78109. Another combination that spoke to me was again with the gray, 78103, but then this time with the purple, 78125. So I thought that was a great combination. Now this is 100% wool, non-superwash sport weight. So this is a really, really nice yarn, really budget friendly as well. And then last but certainly not least, my wheelhouse, always in a pink. I love this rosy pink color with the cream color, which is actually similar to the pattern, what they did in the pattern. The cream color is number 7801, and the dusty pink or rosy pink color is 78106. So those are some of my future plans that I'd love to get to, but I still have two sweaters with bodies on the go, uh, a pair of socks, and we won't even talk about anything that's in hibernation at home. So that's it for the first episode of Necessities Podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. I can't wait to see you next week. I'll talk to you soon. Have a great week. Have a great weekend. See you soon. Bye-bye.